Work log 20241212. Head of Reclamation, Alex Grimes. It's been a minute since I've reported on the automated cleaners, so here's an update. They are working. They pick up junk and they keep walkways clean, but man, are they dumb, and they keep slamming into other equipment and structures. Consider this a request for a cleaning machine that actually maps its location before one of these suckers takes me out. On the housekeeping side of things, we're tackling some decommissioned water tanks. I don't know why, because they look fine to me, but at least we get some quality aluminum that hasn't had raw sewage sitting in it. Reclaiming the aluminum is straightforward. We cut out as large of a portion as we can, and we send the small scraps to the foundry for melting into new ingots. The large tank walls are preloaded with internal stressors that keep them curling, which is a huge danger if one happens to snap near any worker, so we'll flatten them out through annealing. A few large slabs for weight, a trip to the kiln, and presto. Mostly flat sheets of aluminum ready for repurposing. Of course, what I actually want to talk about is making progress on the Rex build. It would be great to reuse some non-rusting aluminum as shielding on this mech, but we'll see what happens. First, I went to weld static hardware in place. It's such a pain to work on a machine where the bolts and nuts keep falling into piles of junk that are lying around. Previously, I implemented some pistons and whatnot into the frame. So today, I'll show you inclusion of more systems and bits to pad out the design. Most of the heavy lifting will be handled by hydraulics, but I'll still need to integrate required electrical subsystems. You know, sometimes, if you wish really, really hard, you can manifest your desires. For example, I wished I didn't have to use this terrible manhole cover I found in the pile, and it came true. PCB Way stepped in to provide super clean bearing vents that work great for the elbows. Due to the continual heavy loads that the elbows will experience, I needed a more precise part that could clearly vent out excessive heat. PCB Way's versatility in manufacturing made them the obvious choice for this project. Their high-quality 3D printing, PCB prototyping, and custom manufacturing streamlined the process of creating tailored components. Instead of wasting time grinding less than ideal parts to specification, I rely on their precision to deliver the quality I need, saving time and effort while getting it done right. You'll definitely see more of their parts on other critical locations around Rex, and I am grateful to have their cooperation. What I'm not grateful for is my thinking that 360 degree hand rotation was so cool. Now I have to figure out how to route a dozen tubes and wires without them snapping or weld the hands in place. If you think there are too many clips in this audit of me welding hardware in place, consider that each of these would end up falling into trash every time I try to unscrew them. Doing this once will save a lot of grief later. Well, twice, because two hands. L listen, the point is do this, it's helpful. You may be disappointed to see that there aren't a bunch of gnarly, poorly managed hydraulic tubes recorded in this log. And you're right, there aren't. That'll happen in the next log, most likely. For once, I planned ahead and just attached the fittings, saving hose installation for later. I also get to procrastinate tedious work for future me to deal with. In your face, me. It's okay, because I know that future me will love installing dozens of hydraulic tubes while scared of scuffing up a brand new paint job. Just you wait and see.
After getting the last conduits and doodads installed on the arms, I immediately shifted attention to the legs. A lot of the construction will be similar, so it's a good idea to knock it out while the process is still fresh on my mind. More PCV way venting is attached to the feet, ankle pistons, and ankle bearings because of their superior construction. Not to say I'm bad at my job, far from it. I'm practically a manufacturing god, but even divine talent can only go so far when your so-called infinite supplies from the government are still, at the end of the day, just a pile of junk. Yes, yes, I know, I previously exclaimed the wonders of having an unlimited build budget, but that's only for what's in front of me. And what's in front of me is old, outdated, thrown out garbage. I can use as much as I want, but I don't get an unlimited budget for say, shiny new bolts, or welding gas, or paint, or basic tools. Really, anything that isn't thrown away scraps comes out of my own paycheck. Now, to be fair, everyone in the Omniplex has to deal with this. If you want better parts, you gotta have the coin for it. The not fair part is that we aren't given coin to do anything around here. This either leads to me using mismatched components or trying to machine new parts from old stock, which also has its disadvantages. I do make it look pretty good though. Here's another tangent, but at least it's relevant to the Omni Waste Reclamation District. I've said many things about how dumb the pile is and having to work here, but I challenge anyone who doesn't believe it's the lifeblood of the Omniplex to explain why it isn't important. I've also stated that I'm good at my job. So good at my job that I've been taking volumetric data analysis of the pile every week over the course of my quote-unquote career. The Ministry of Omniplex Resources doesn't ask for this data for some reason, but I give it to them anyways because I know what matters. And what matters is that the pile has been getting smaller. I thought it was a fluke, but it's not. And to be honest, it's making me concerned. I built a mech pelvis. Great. That seems so unimportant right now compared to what seems to be unfolding in front of me in the heart of the Omniplex. But you numbnuts in the Dominion just care about your dumb paperwork, so I'm sending in the statistics and analysis of the district. Just look into it for once, and I'll get back to this exhausting Rex audit. Of course, I mean the audit itself is exhausting, not building wrecks, of course not. I'm constructing this mech in overtime, but that's not tiring me. Government is. Anyways, I am, for the first time, putting in some more delicate components needed to keep everything running smoothly. I try to keep as much equipment shielded within the mech frame or conduits, but you can't always fit everything perfectly. Speaking of perfect, is there anywhere I can't shove PCBOA parts and they just work? So good. I already said there isn't hydraulic tubing in this audit, and this isn't hydraulic tubing. It's stupidly thick cabling that is impossible to maneuver, but necessary for the amount of amps running through Rex's systems. Speaking of systems and stupidly necessary, have you ever tried making optics? It's not easy. Hopefully you can see just how fine my handiwork needs to be for this to function. After very careful installation of the primary optics, I include a few more sensors for thermal imaging, depth of field, and radioactive emissions.
I also felt like it was a good idea to siphon off some coolant for the new electronics. And just like last time, I finally, with great hesitation, attached antennas onto the communication system so people can begrudgingly contact me while I am working. And work I must. Finally, Rex is in the home stretch. I just need to reinforce pretty much everything. Here's a full 20 second clip so you can see how long it takes to install one rivet. There are 559 rivets. I'll let you do the math and I'll give you a hint. You're wrong because it took seven hours. Remember when I said I get to use unlimited garbage? What do you think happens when a mech company makes enough money to afford welding all of their components? They throw out their rivets, of course they would. And when no one wants to use rivets, guess where it ends up? Before locking down everything on the torso, I looked into some hatch door references and planned a design with some clean scrap that was lying around. Of course, nothing can go smoothly. Remember what I said about tool budgets? Someone's gonna pay for what they did here. It's actually kind of remarkable to see what stuff you can make from other stuff once you go looking for it. That's why rivets are actually found throughout the Omniplex. You can recycle them from any kind of forgeable metal, which can't be said about welding gas or chemicals. I wanted to recycle this plate into bucket hands, but I couldn't find enough of them, so I ended up making them from stock material. Don't tell me that's not worth it. I'll be attaching the usual required footage at the end of this recording, but there's just so much going on that I had to give a quick overview of everything. And just like that, we're already here, huh? Time for one last assembly before disassembling again to reassemble again. I'm such a proud father. Just look at my boy standing there all big and stuff. He's not perfect, but I've made a lot of progress. And you know what they say, seek progress, not perfection. Thanks for supporting the Royal Archive. They help manage my tax forms. And log 2024-1212.